So if you're in the real estate space, you know there's a ton of content we can create for realtors nowadays. Specifically, outside of listings, more of marketing, branded, professional videos. Because being able to create these could really help you bring in more clients and help you stand out. So let's break down some tips that specifically helped me land a recent gig I shot and how you could do the same. Let's get into it. What does the Tao Group do? We believe in thinking differently. We challenge normality by combining our expertise with our clients' wants and needs. We challenge normality when we find your dream home in and around Greater Houston. Who can give you a peace of mind when buying or selling your home? The Tao Group, period. So here's what most videographers might do wrong. A client comes to them with an idea, they listen to it, and they completely change it because they might not think it's a good idea, might not know how to initially create it, or might not think it's cool enough or something like that. So when I first heard this team's pitch, I was honestly on the fence about it, like their concept. But I heard them out, had a great call, bounced a couple ideas back and forth, and then just went from there. Like I always do, I have an initial call and listen to everything they have to say, but never make any promises or talk about pricing or any of that on that first call. I wanna take what they've told me, take some time to put the vision together, what it might require, and then send a proposal with cost, what's included, and all of that. And that's exactly what I did, and they were happy with what I had to offer. So the key is to really take time to listen to your client, all of their ideas, and just conceptualize what they're trying to do and create a very thorough, thought out vision for the video. The mistake most videographers make, and I did in the beginning, was just go out there with no plan, film things that you might need, might not need, just cool shots and not put a lot of thought behind it, and it just might turn out to be random B-roll. So trust me, take the time to really plan, script out your video, do it even shot by shot if you can, because you'll really be able to see the vision and the direction of that video, and editing will be a lot easier. And also because most of these professional videos have some sort of audio, whether it's on camera talking parts or a voiceover. So you at least want the visuals to match what they're saying in the video. And funny enough, they actually initially did not want any audio in this video. They just wanted some of these shots and music overlay and thought that would be good to go. But I really thought about it and having a super compelling voiceover with a on-camera part at the end to tie it in together is what would really make the video and also add just more production to it. And in this case, I knew that they primarily wanted this video to be about the neighborhoods they primarily do a lot of business in, the team itself, and their mission statement. And once we had the script for the voiceover, it was initially the framework of the video. Now that you're in editing, you've finished shooting everything that you need, and you're putting this video together, it's really easy to just keep going and going and think you need this and that, but you probably don't. And what I mean is like, do you really need that speed ramp or all those speed ramps or all those crazy cuts or that B-roll shot that looks really cool? Like, does it actually add to the video? The thing to remember is you're making this for the business and its target clients or viewers, not another filmmaker or videographer filled with cool stuff. And that's why my approach for this video was pretty simple and straightforward. I took their ideas, formulated this vision, and executed it that way. And everyone was really happy with it. Because honestly, I had a lot more cooler shots that I got of the team, like close-ups, they looked more cinematic, compressed, a lot of depth of field, but it just doesn't add to it. That one wide shot in the beginning, followed by another one of the team leader, 
then jumping to neighborhood shots is exactly what we needed. And doing this much shorter approach rather than a two to three minute video kept everything short and sweet and more of an opportunity for a viewer to see it on social media to stay from start to finish versus just watching the first 30 seconds of it and not the rest of it. And that's pretty much it. So if you think about it, these tips are honestly pretty practical, but funny enough, not everyone does these things. And it's because of this creative industry because we're always all pushing each other, which is really great, but at the same time, it's easy to follow trends, things that they're doing, which could potentially hurt our work versus benefit it. So that's pretty much for this video, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. I'm two for two now. Last video I did, she woke up right as I finished and that's the case again.